Okay, so in the last video we dove into Flux1 dev context, and I noticed some of you wanted me to test out Nunchaku to see if it's actually faster than the workflows we used before. Spoiler alert, it's faster. Emphasis on faster. But is Nunchaku better? That's what we're going to find out today. And Nunchaku comes with its own terms and conditions, which we'll also unpack today. I'll also tackle some of the hiccups you ran into with the previous workflow. We're going to cover how to install the easy, one-click, comfy UI Nunchaku. For anyone who's a little uneasy about messing with your existing comfy UI setup, and then we'll look at how to install Nunchaku directly into the Comfy UI you already have. We'll also check if Megcache works as intended, test GGUF and test the workflows out. Originally, Comfy UI Nunchaku only worked on GPUs supporting Flash Attention 2, but now there's an FP16 mode via the Nunchaku FP16 setting, optimized for Turing cards like the RTX 2060, 2070 and 2080. So those GPUs are officially supported. Welcome back to Sneaky Robot. Here's today's workflow. Let's kick things off with installation. I'll start with the easy route, then we'll jump into the slightly more involved method. By involved, I mean the more hands-on method. First, head over to the Comfy UI Easy Install GitHub page. The link's in the description and on the Sneaky Robot workflow page, and scroll down to the Windows installation in three steps section. Click the here link next to download Comfy UI Easy Install with Nunchaku. Now a quick heads up, this is going to install a completely separate, portable Comfy UI on your PC. The beauty here is it bundles everything Nunchaku needs. You won't have to chase down wheels or tinker under the hood of your main Comfy UI, which is usually what trips people up. Models aren't re-downloaded either because you'll link to your existing Comfy UI directories in a minute. The only drawback is you'll end up with two Comfy UI installs on your machine. But honestly, if you're frequently adding nodes, having at least two installs is pretty much standard operating procedure. So once that zip finishes downloading, extract it into its own folder. Don't unzip it into your existing Comfy UI folder, and definitely avoid system directories like Program Files, Windows, or the root C directory. Another thing you shouldn't do is to run the installer as administrator. Next, dive into the Comfy UI Nunchaku folder you just created and double-click Comfy UI Easy Nunchaku.bat. There might be a pause before the command window kicks in. Just hang tight. It might take a while to finish up because it's pulling down extra nodes the script author thought you might find useful. Once that wraps up, it's time to link your models so you don't end up duplicating them. Inside Comfy UI Nunchaku, you'll find extra model pathsmaker.bat. Copy that into your old Comfy UI models folder and run it there. What it does is generate an extra model paths.yaml file that lists all the subfolders in your old setup. Grab that YAML file and drop it into your new Comfy UI Nunchaku folder. Inside the Comfy UI Easy Install, Comfy UI folder, and now Nunchaku can see and use your existing models. There's one catch. Folders like LLM and LLM GGUF can't be redirected via YAML. To handle those, we'll use the link shell extension, which creates actual symbolic links so your new Comfy UI Nunchaku sees them as if they were local. To get it, visit the link shell extension website, the link's down below. Hit download, and if it doesn't take you straight to a download page, just right-click download and open in a new tab. Click on the link shell extension download. It's the first one, about 3.76 megabytes. Double click the installer and follow the prompts. Once it's installed, right click the folder you need to link in your old Comfy UI. For me, it's the LLM folder and choose pick link source. Then navigate to Comfy UI Nunchaku. Go into its models folder. I'll delete the existing empty LLM folder Right-click and select Drop As and then Symbolic Link. And that's it! You've got a separate Comfy UI with Nunchaku, no messy breaks, and you still keep your main Comfy UI untouched. Just click Run NVIDIA GPU.bat to fire it up. Alright, before we jump into the new workflows, 
Let's quickly run through the manual install on your existing Comfy UI. Fire up Comfy UI, click on Manager. Search for Nunchaku and install Comfy UI Nunchaku. Once it's done, restart Comfy. Let it fully load, then double click in the workspace. Search for Nunchaku Wheel Installer and grab that node. Hook it up to the Any Preview node and select Hugging Face as the source. It should default to the latest version, then run that little workflow. It downloads and installs the Nunchaku wheel for you. When that finishes, restart Comfy UI one more time. And you've added Nunchaku to your main install without blowing it up. From here onward, everything's the same, whether you're on the easy install or the manual route. Once Comfy UI is back up drag in the workflow, this time we've got three. Nunchaku without Meg Cash, Nunchaku with Meg Cash, and Nunchaku without Meg Cash, but with the GGUF text encoder and GGUF VAE. Each of these works on either version of Comfy UI, Nunchaku. Now I want to clear something up. A few of you ran into errors from what I could reproduce. It only happens if your model nodes aren't pointed to the right models, or your LLM provider and model don't match up. Double check that, and make sure you've pasted your API key into the external API field. Another hiccup might come from the resolution calculator. If you have the old resolution calculator installed, it'll error out because it's unsupported and no longer in the manager. You'll need to fully uninstall that calculator, Restart Comfy UI, and then install the Control Alt AI nodes. So let's grab the Nunchaku models. Head over to the Sneaky Robot Workflow page, click the link to the Hugging Face repo, and you'll see two variants one optimized for 50 series GPUs, and another for everything else that's NVIDIA. Since I'm testing on a 20 series card which doesn't support flash attention too, I'm grabbing the second option. After it's downloaded, drop it into the models, diffusion models folder. You can keep using your existing ClipL and T5 models, plus your VAE from Flux or Flux Dev Context. I've included the links for the text encoders and VAEs in the sneaky robot workflow page. Download the text encoders and place them in the models text encoders folder and download the VAEs and paste them in the model's VAE folder. Links in the description. One more trick to squeeze extra speed out. Download the Nunchaku T5 model. Yup, they've got their own special T5 model. Just remember, that T5 only works on GPUs that support flash attention too, so it won't run on 20 series cards. If you can use it, stick it in models, text encoders, and you're all set. All right, let's test this workflow. I'm starting with the version without Meg Cash, and I'll work my way through the rest from there. To test it, I'm loading a portrait of a woman, just a straightforward image. In the Nunchaku group, I've got the model loaded, attention is set to FP16, and float is also set to 16. Now, just so you're clear, this setting should only be used if you're on a 20 series GPU, like RTX 2060, 2070, or 2080. For the encoders, I'll be using the Nunchaku text encoder node. However, I'm using the regular VIT-L model and the T5-FP8 model, not the Nunchaku version, and the VAE is the Flux VAE. Now, about LoRa's. This is important. Nunchaku doesn't play nice with just any LoRa loader. It only works with their loader. So make sure you're using the Nunchaku Flux LoRa loader specifically. I'm using the Turbo LoRa on top of that to squeeze a bit more speed out of it. The prompt I'm using for all of these tests is the same. It's change the image to a full body shot of the woman, placing her on a beach with beautiful beachwear. Make it a beautiful sunny day with bloom and high definition, while maintaining her original facial features, hair, skin tone, and jewelry. Everything else should stay as is. I'm running it with just eight steps.
and it only took a few seconds. The results? Honestly amazing. Now let's try out the second workflow. The whole point of this one is to check whether Megcache actually works with Nunchaku or not. I'm keeping all the settings exactly the same. Only change? I'm bumping up the megapixels in the resolution calculator to 1, just a tiny increase in image quality. Same prompt, same model, same LoRa. No changes there and the steps are still at 8. Alright, let's see what happens. And we immediately get an error. So I reran it, but this time I bypassed Meg Cache. Just took it out of the chain entirely. And beautiful results again. Still some artifacts here and there, but honestly, we're only using eight steps. So it's official. Nunchaku does not work with Meg Cache. Not that it's a huge deal. It's still blazing fast. All right, now we're at the last workflow. This one is using the GGUF text encoder along with the GGUF VAE. What I'm trying to figure out here is, first of all, does it even work? And second, does it speed things up? I'm using the same image, same nunchaku model, same settings. Literally everything's identical. The only difference is the Q4T5 GGUF model for the text encoder and the Pigflux GGUF VAE model. Turbo LoRa stays in place. The prompt stays the same, and the steps are still at 8. The final image looks good and it's super fast. The only thing? Her head's huge, like comically big. So I adjusted it by using the input image size option and that helped. So now we know. Megcache dead in the water, doesn't work. But GGUF text encoders and VAE models, those do work and they actually help. They seem to take some pressure off both GPU and CPU, which is great. But as far as quality goes, 8 steps isn't quite enough with Nunchaku plus GGUF models. You might want to push it up to 20 steps. Just turn off Turbo LoRa when you do it. It'll still be insanely fast. And yes, all of this was tested in real time. So basically, we're down to two workflows that are actually usable. Use the first one if you've got enough VRAM to spare, and go with the second one if your GPU is hovering around that 8GB VRAM mark. So does this work? Yes, it does. But, like always, there's a catch. And that catch is, to really get the most out of this, you're gonna have to upgrade your GPU. I mean, let's be honest. It's only going to get harder and harder to run AI models on older cards. And it's not just about size. It's the newer tech like Flash Attention 2 that's changing everything, so maybe it's time to look at that Christmas list. I'd say put a 40 series GPU on there. If you're just doing this for fun or passion projects, the 4080 with 16 gigabytes will do just fine. But if you're working with clients or doing paid gigs, then yeah, 4090 with 24 gigabytes of VRAM is the move. Now, about the 50 series cards, I'm still not sold. It's not that they're bad, but for me, the price to performance ratio just doesn't justify it yet. So far, the only one that even remotely makes sense is the 5090. 
And that's not because of the price. It's the size and performance. Don't buy it unless you're actually making money with it. Or, you know, you've got cash burning a hole in your pocket. Otherwise, just grab a decent 12 gigabytes card and stick to quantized FP8 or GGUF models. They're still kind of solid, at least for now, but maybe not for video generation and really big LLMs. All right, if you've made it this far, thank you, seriously. Please hit like and subscribe if you want more in-depth, brutally honest AI tutorials like this. And hey, check out my Patreon. It's totally free, but if you feel like supporting me, that would honestly mean a lot. You can also buy me a coffee if you're into that. I'm trying to get my hands on a better GPU so I can keep making these videos. This is the Sneaky Robot. Until next time, bye.